Hey, what's going on? It's Daniel Gillespie here with ThePawnArriving.com, and in this video, I'm gonna give you nine of my tips to help you avoid getting rejected for credit card applications. But before jumping in, if you're new to this channel, I've been blogging about miles and points for the past five years, and on this channel, I cover a lot of different credit card related topics. So if you like that type of stuff, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on anything. So all of these tips that I'm going to talk about, assume that you're only applying for cards that you actually have a reasonable chance of getting approved for. So if your credit score is down in the 500s and you're going for a card that probably requires a score around 720, these tips really don't apply. So my first tip is to avoid violating any credit card application rules. Now most of the major issuers like American Express, Chase, Citibank, and others have their own unique set of application rules. And over the past couple of years, we've seen these rules become more common and also more restrictive. So if you are actively pursuing rewards, a lot of times it's very easy to get tripped up and not even realize that you're violating a rule that's gonna lead to you getting denied. So it's a very good idea that before you ever apply for a credit card to make sure that you're not violating any of these application rules. And an easy way to do that is with the new free app called WalletFlow. WalletFlow will automate your eligibility for all sorts of different credit cards. And if you're not eligible, it'll actually remind you when you finally are. It's a very easy and free way to find cards you're available for and to avoid unnecessary dings on your credit report. So I highly suggest for you to check it out. The second tip I have is to be strategic about credit pools. So if you don't already know, there are three major credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. And whenever you apply for a credit card, not all of those bureaus are always used. Some banks like Capital One might pull from all three bureaus, but other banks like Barclays may only pull from TransUnion. So it's a really good idea to keep tabs on what banks are pulling from what bureaus because you can alternate your application so that you can give your credit reports a rest for several months. Because remember, one hard pull might only affect your credit score a few points, but if you have two or three or four, uh, very close to each other, the negative effect on your credit report can actually be exacerbated and each successive credit report or credit pool can actually impact your credit score even worse. By the way, if you're looking for a way to find out what banks pull from which bureaus, you can find a link to that in the article below. The next tip I have is to just get your foot in the door sometimes. So if you're sort of a borderline candidate, meaning that your credit score is on the lower end of what's acceptable, or maybe you just have a thinner credit profile history. In a lot of cases, you just wanna get your foot in the door with the bank, and you can do that by applying for one of the easier to get cards, and then waiting maybe six to 12 months to apply for one of the harder to get approved for cards. So let's say that your credit score is around 690 and your credit history is a little bit thin, but you're really interested in applying for the Sapphire Preferred. Well, in a lot of cases, it's just gonna make a lot more sense to first go and get approved for the Chase Freedom card, which is a lot easier to get, and then maybe wait around six months or so, or maybe longer before going for the Sapphire Preferred, because at that time you'll actually have a relationship with Chase and your approval odds are only gonna go up. The next tip I have is to bolster your income ethically. So some people will go out and just pretty much inflate their income two or three times, and that's really not ethical. I'm not even sure that that's actually legal because it's a misrepresentation of your income but using accessible income allows you to bolster your income in a very ethical way. Basically, if you're 21 years or older, you can include income from different people that allow you to have reasonable access to that income. So what does reasonable access mean? Well, it means basically that they maybe pay for some of your expenses, maybe you share a joint account, or maybe they transfer funds into your account. There are a few more things to know about accessible income, and if you wanna find out more about that, you can check out the video that I'm gonna link and also check out the article below. The next tip I have is to put spend on all of your cards with that issuer that you wanna apply for. It looks really bad whenever you apply for a credit card and you have dormant credit cards with that bank. So what you wanna to try to do is put spend on all of your cards every so often, at least every six months. But if you're gonna apply for credit cards with that bank, it's a good idea to have some more recent spend just so the bank doesn't look at you as a unprofitable customer. The next thing to consider is setting up a banking relationship with that bank. So some issuers like Wells Fargo and Bank of America are known to prefer their own customers over other applicants. Now this is not to say that you can't get approved for their cards if you don't have an account with them, but your odds are gonna greatly increase if you do set up an account. Now sometimes you can find these special bonuses for opening up a savings or checkings account, so in a lot of ways you can sort of double, double dip on your rewards if you do this, but it's a good idea to keep tabs of all of those banks that are gonna virtually require you to have a bank account with them in order to get approval. 
The next thing you wanna do is optimize the timing of your applications. Personally, I recommend 90 days in between credit card applications, but that's just sort of my rule of thumb. You definitely can apply for a few cards at once or within a few days. The risk there is that those hard inquiries will add up and drop your credit score for a good amount. But like I said, if you wait about 90 days, that's generally whenever the negative impact of a hard inquiry begins to fade. So you can actually avoid the hurt to your credit score when you apply. Also, if you have too many inquiries in a very short amount of time, that can be a red flag to a lot of banks. So I would generally go with that time frame of 90 days in between credit card applications. The next tip is to check out pre-qualified and pre-approved offers. So some people equate both of these as the same. Personally, I consider pre-approval offers to be a lot more um, valuable. And these are offers that generally give you a fixed interest rate. So if you go to a bank or you get, receive a targeted mailer, you may see it an APR rate of something like 16.5 versus something like 12.5 to 18.6 or something like that. So anytime you see that fixed rate on a pre-approved offer, generally that means that your odds of getting approved are going to be higher. Now, normal pre-qualified offers can also mean that you have increased chances of getting approved, but I would not put as much stake in those as I would a true fixed rate offer. And my final tip is to always call the reconsideration line. So most major banks have reconsideration lines. Some don't have official lines, but they still have people that you can call. And basically the reconsideration line is your opportunity to persuade a bank agent to overturn your denied application or to approve you for a pending application. And all you have to do is explain to the bank agent why you want or need that card and also explain away anything that looks a little bit iffy on your credit report, such as a lot of new accounts or inquiries, or perhaps you had some type of old collections. Now, I highly suggest for you to check out my Chase Reconsideration article, which is linked below. I'll also link out to the video because that walks you through what a reconsideration phone call is going to be like and gives you some tips on how to handle it. One thing I will say is to always make sure you call reconsideration at least twice because a lot of times just speaking to a different agent can lead to a different outcome. So those are my tips for avoiding credit card denials. I hope that those help you decrease your odds of getting rejected for credit cards and be sure to check out the new app Wallet Flow. Once again, it's free and it's going to help to automate your eligibility for credit cards so that you always can apply with confidence.